everyone. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. And I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. And we are going to be going over the Torah of Yah. We know that your time is very valuable. And Dad, Jason, has lost his voice. We had a bit of a dog incident today. We brought home some new calves, and they kind of escaped today and went against the fence, and the dogs didn't like that, so they broke out into a fight. So there's some screaming involved and some blood and some cuts involved. So Jason lost his voice, so if you don't hear much from him, that is why. Yeah, <clears throat> always something exciting around here, folks, so thanks, Kate. I appreciate that. And, um, yes, it was another eventful day, and, um, you know, I definitely need to wash my mouth out with soap after today. I'm, I, I would have those incidents. And so those who get the wrong idea or the wrong impression that somehow because we teach the Torah and we um, we know the Torah and things of that nature, that somehow we walk around with halos on our heads or things of that nature. And it absolutely does not uh, happen like that. We are we are the sinners amongst the, um, I will be the first to admit that uh, without the Messiah, I would be long burn. I would be long into hell. And so um, these were events that I believe are completely orchestrated by Hasatan, that <clears throat> he is trying to stop us from doing what we are doing here and we refuse, we are t even talking about it, considering we cannot read, and we're going to see how Eli does. Um, we were talking about, you know, just saving this for a couple of days, but I've lost my voice before like this, and it usually takes a few days to get back. And so sometimes the next day is not any better than what today is, and so we thought we would just wing it, we'll have Eli read it. <coughs> but um, that is what happens when you, uh, you know, you, you guys lose dog battles, and it is always traumatic when there is a pit bull um, dog battle. And for those who do not know, we have 10 pit bulls, seven who are from the same family, and the rest are um, not, but there's 10 in total, and sometimes it's a little bit chaotic, and today was one of those moments. And um, it's just, it's a different kind of a world when you have 10 pit bulls and you have to uh, keep them sane and keep the house sane. And we ended up with a few cuts, a few injuries, and this is about all I am going to be able to even say on this matter. So we want to get into this. And we want to thank everybody for it. Um, I believe Nicole had a couple of verses um, from back in the uh, previous chapters that we may want to go over real quick. And um, if we have those, that would be tremendously great. And if not, then we will skip over them. But she brought them to our attention, and we need to go over them. We need to look at them. And so let's take a, a quick... <coughs> gander at these and um it's genesis 9 and i and i threw everybody off i wasn't gonna I, we didn't know how this was gonna go down but nine three four five and six nine three four and five and six okay so let's take a look at this real quick <clears throat> just because there's another one that has it saying that these are the laws so we don't know if these are really right so there's other resources out there that we're we're looking at as well and so, what do we have? Go ahead and, Eli, read uh, 9, 3, and 4. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Okay, and so what did they say on that, Nicole? So, 9, 3... And then the next one was what? Nine, three, so it just has that every moving thing that lives shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. It must be taken into context with commands about animals we may eat. Okay, so I mean, there's always a thing that some people don't want to eat meat, that they want to eat only herbs. So I mean, would their the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, you shall you not eat. So do not eat the blood for sure. Um... Anyone? Anyone, gentlemen? Um, I don't think that's really a command. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. I don't know. Um, anyone else? I think I we looked at this. What's the next one? Let's go over that. The next one's five and six. Okay, five and six. Eli, let's take a quick look at this. And truly your, bl and truly your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I, require, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheds man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Elohim made he man. And what they say this command is, do not murder 
and the animal or the man that murders shall be put to death. Uh, but it that's not what that, that says. Okay, so yeah, whoever shows them by magic, which I said, <clears throat> and I think we had the the argument last night that we don't. This would be in the land of Yisrael, and this would be if you had witnesses, and I mean you were all under the Torah, things of this nature. Um, and so, what does it say again that that we should kill a man for him killing someone else? Do not murder, and the animal or the man that murders shall be put to death. So do not murder, but murder if the guy is murdered. Is yeah. that what it's saying? And <coughs> it has other murder. verses that it connects to. So maybe when we get to like Exodus 20. Well, there's a lot of these that they connect that it, to. I mean, yeah. like Leviticus 11 is the dietary laws that for the, the thing before. Like if you're uncertain, they actually spell this out further on. So I would say these are uncertain. I mean, they're not things that we could actually take and make a doctrine out of because um, like at 4 and 5, it says... But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, you shall not eat. And then the one right above that, every moving thing that lives shall be food for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. If you take that out of context right there and you start eating swine, that's a problem because we know from Leviticus 11 what the dietary laws are. So I think we're going to stick with what we have. And um, this is what we have so far. So, Jay, do you want to give us these real quick? Yeah. Commandment one. Commandment one is be fruitful. Commandment two is multiply. Commandment three, replenish the earth. Commandment four, subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living thing. Commandment five is have dominion over all living creatures. And commandment six, man and woman should build their own families. And commandment seven, do not eat the blood. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's begin. And we have some chapters to do here. We'll see how far we can get. Um, I'm hoping that we can make through it um, on all of these. So here we go. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Cam, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gemer, and Magog, and Madai, and Yavan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Theodorak. And the sons of Gemer, Ashkenaz, and Rephath, and Togarma. And the sons of Yavan, Elisha, and Tarshisha, and Ki no, no, sorry. Ketum and Dodaim. By these were the isles of the other nations divided into their lands. Everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. And the sons of Cam, Cush, and Mitraim, and Put, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seva, and Shavlia, and Kavta, and Rama, and Kavteka. And the sons of Rama, Sheva, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a warrior and hunter in the earth. He, wa he was a warrior and a hunter before Yahuwah. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the warrior hunter before Yahuwah. In the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalne, in the land of Shinar. Out of the land went forth Ashurshur, and built Nineveh, and the city Rechovath, and Kelak. And Resin between Nineveh and Kalak, the same as a great city. And Mitraim begat Ludim, and Nanimim, and Lehavim, and Naphtukim, and Pathtrusim, and Kalkukim, out of whose name came Pelishitim, and Kaphtorim. And Canaan begat Zidon, his firstborn, and Keth, and Yevusi, and the Imori, and the Girgashi, and the Shivi, and the Arki, and the Sini, and the Arvadi, and the Semari, and the Shamathi, and afterward were the families of the Kenaim spread abroad. And the border of Kenaim was from Zidon, as far as you come to Gerar, unto Gaza, as you go, unto Saddam, and Amora and Adma, and Sevim, even unto Elisha. These are the sons of Cam, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, e even to him were children born. The children of Shem, Elam, and Ashur, and Arpachshad, and Lud, and Aram. And the children of Aram, Uts, and Shul, and Gether, and Mash, 
And Arshad begat Shalak, and Shalak begat Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Yaktan. And Yaktan begat Almadad, and Shalef, and Shetzar Maveth, and Yerak, and Hadoram, and Uzal, and Dilka, and Oval, and Avimiel, and Sheva, and Ophir, and Shavilia, and Yovab. All these were the sons of Yaktan. And their dwelling was from Mesha, as you go on to Sephar, a mountain of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Awesome. <clears throat> Alright, so hold on real quick. Alright, so that was a huge list of people in there. Um, who was that? Gentlemen. That was Noah's children's children's children. Children. And so inside of that, we got this big dude named Nimrod. Um, for those who do not know, who is Nimrod? Nimrod was basically the king of the land of Shinar. He is the one that built the Tower of Babel and the one that tried to go and smite God. Basically, he tried to go up there and kill him. And that didn't work out. And you guys know that that's where all the languages got confused. And that's why we have a billion different languages now. Yeah, and so at the time, how many different angels went down and confused the languages? It's like 70. 70 different languages, yep. <clears throat> and so, all right, so let's go into ver a chapter. That, no, there's no commands there. So let's head into chapter 11. All right, I'm going to try to read this and see how it goes. Um, I'm sorry for the, uh, you know, obviously it sounds like I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day for since I was like eight or something. <laughs> it's not good, <clears throat> but this happens whenever there's drama. Okay, Genesis 11. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto the heavens, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And Yahuwah came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built. And Yahuwah said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahuwah scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because Yahuwah did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did Yahuwah scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and begat Arkashad, two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arkashad, it's Arpakshad, 500 years and begat sons and daughters. And Arkashad lived five and 30 years and begat Shalak. And Arpakshad lived after he begat Shalak, 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And Shalak lived 30 years and begat Eber. And Shalak lived after he begat Eber, 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and thirty years and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg four hundred and thirty years and begat sons and daughters. And Peleg lived thirty years and begat Rayu. And Peleg lived after he begat Rayu two hundred and nine years and begat sons and daughters. And Rayu lived two and thirty years and begat Serug. And Rayu lived after he begat Serug two hundred and seven years and begat sons and daughters. And Serug lived thirty years and begat Nacor. And Serug lived after he begat Nacor two hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And Nacor lived nine and twenty years and begat Terok. And Nacor lived after he begat Terok a hundred and nineteen years and begat sons and daughters. And Terok lived seventy years and begat Evram, Nacor, and Haran. <clears throat> now these are the generations of Terok. Terok begat Evram, Nacor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Terak in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chasdeum. You guys remember that one? Mm -hmm. How'd he die? In a fire. Yeah, he got burned alive. Okay, 29. And Abram and Nacor took them women. The name of Abram's woman was Sarai, and the name of Nacor's woman, Milka, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milka, and the father of Yekah. But Sarai was barren. She had no children. 
And Tarak took Avram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sari his daughter-in-law, his son Avram's woman. And they went forth with them from Ur of Chasdeem to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Tarak were two hundred and five years, and Tarak died in Haran. Now there's a ton, a ton of stuff in here that you actually get. Like when you guys read the book of Jubilees and Jasher, things of this nature. Anyone want to fill us in on a few of the, the things that like went on in the background on this whole thing? Uh, Abram. Back Abram, in the day, was, Nimrod had a bunch of servants that were basically like magicians, and they saw some stars things in the sky, like a giant star eating a small star, and they thought that was the son of Terah, uh, and that who begat Abraham. So basically. Nimrod said, bring me the kid and I will kill this kid. So he brought him a kid he had like the night before that from another, like a maidservant. And they killed that kid said, so Abraham lived. And then Abraham lived in a cave until he was like 14 years old or something like that. Yeah, so they actually saw the death of Nimrod. All these uh, evil sorcerer magicians and, you know, these, these guys, you know, for, for what it is, these evil magicians have the power of demons and things of that nature. And so they're able to conjure things and they are able to replicate um, things in that nature. So yeah, there's a tremendous amount of history in all of that. Um, but again, there are zero commands, and this is our quest right here is to go through and find these commands. Genesis 12. <clears throat> Eli, you ready to read this? Yep. All right, let's hit it. Now Yahoo had said unto El Avram, Get you out of your country, and from your kindred, and from your father's house, unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curses you. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed, as Jehu had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his, wa his woman, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance they had gathered, and the souls they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Moreh, and the Kenai was then in the land. And Jehu appeared unto El Abram, and said, Unto your seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto Yahuwah, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent having Bethel on the west, and I on the east. And there he built an altar unto Yahuwah, and called upon the name of Yahuwah. And Abraham journeyed, going on still toward the Negev. And there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down to Mitzrayim to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Mitzrayim, that he said unto El Sarai, his woman, Behold now, I know that you are a fair woman to look upon, Therefore it shall come to pass, when the, Mitzrayim, when, when the Mitzrayim shall see you, that they shall say, that this is his woman, and they will kill me, but they will save you alive. Say, I pray you, you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and my soul shall, shall live because of you. And it came to pass, that when Abram was coming to Mitzrayim, the Mitzrayim beheld the woman that she was very fair. The prince, uh, the prince is also of Pharaoh saw her and commanded her before Pharaoh, and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house, and he entreated Abraham well for her sake, and he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels, and Jehovah plagued Pharaoh in his house with great plagues because of Sarai Abram's woman, and Pharaoh called Abram, and said, What is this that you have done unto me? Why did you not tell me that she was your woman? Why did why said you, She is my sister, so I might have taken her to be my woman. Now therefore, behold your woman, take her, and go your way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his woman, and all that he had. All right, so uh, Abram hatched a plan, and the plan did not work out. Um, well, I mean, here, here's the gig. is, is um, He ha didn't have faith in Yah. And so he didn't consult Yah, and so he just hatched his own plan, and it almost got him in a lot of trouble because he had to sit there with his wife in the clutches of another man for a while, right? It wasn't quite in the clutches, but, I mean, it was like it, that was the intent, right? Pharaoh didn't take the beautiful woman 
um, to not make him the wife or make him, you know, like a queen or make him, you know, concubine, something of the sort. So that was the whole thing. So um, Abraham had to see this and had to see it go down. And this just wasn't like days on end. This was like many days that this stuff had happened. And so he hatched a plan. Um, then what happened? Who else has hatched a plan in this, gen in this generation? Uh, Isaac does it. Isaac I does the same thing later. But after this, uh, Pharaoh actually sends off uh, one of... Uh, his best maid servant, which is Hagar, his uh, other concubine, which we find out later on, that was actually his wife. That actually became his wife as well. Right. All right, so let's continue on. I'm going to keep rolling to this. I probably won't have a voice tomorrow, but you know what? We're going to have a good time. Everyone have a good time? Yep. Yeah. Is everyone doing all right? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Um, stop you on him, please, kid. We can do this. And Abram went up out of Mitzrayim, he and his woman, and all that he had and lot with him into the Negev. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from Negev unto Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of Yahuwah. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife. There was a strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle. And it just took me to school. What? 13. Are we on? 13. This took me to complete school. This is chapter 13, right? Yeah. Yeah, it just took me to school. I was doing so good. Where are we at? Anyone? Mm, Verse. Sorry, guys. I think we are on seven. Seven. There was a strife between the herdsmen and Abraham. This thing kind of is a little tricky. And there was strife. <clears throat> Verse seven. <clears throat> Sorry, folks. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite Ken and the Perizzi dwelled there in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray you, between me and you, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen. For we be brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself. I pray you from me, if you will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the circle of the Yardin, and that it was well, watered everywhere before Yahuwah, destroyed Sodom and Amorah, even as the garden of Yahuwah, like the land of Mitzrayim, as you come unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the circle of the Yardin, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the circle of Yardin, and pitched his tent towards Saddam. But the men of Saddam were wicked and sinners before Yahuwah exceedingly. And Yahuwah said unto El Abram, After that, Lot was separated from him. Lift up now your eyes, and look from the place where you are northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which you see, to you will I give it, to, and to your seed forever. And I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. So that if, if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall your seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto you. Then Abram removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Kevron, and built there an altar unto Yahuwah. Okay, um, we get a lot of stuff, but we got no commandments, right? And so if this is the first time you guys have ever read through the Torah... We're kind of blasting this off because we've read this, I don't know how many times. A lot. A lot. I mean, this, this particular, these particular stories, we've read them over and over and over and over. When we first got into the Torah, we just read it over and over and over. Um, and now we end up reading it over and over and we go through this stuff a lot. So um, this is really good reading. And so hopefully we're not reading too fast. And hopefully we can, you can since this is the first time through the Torah, this is what the Torah is, right? It's the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator. Okay, 14. I'll just keep rolling it. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elkar, Kedorla Omar, king of Eliam, and Tidel, king of nations, that these made war with Bera, king of Saddam, and with Birsha, king of Amorah, Shinav, king of Adama, and Shemeber, king of Zelviam, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. All of these were joined together in the valley of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Kedaloma, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year came Kedor, Kedor Laoma, and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephraim in Ashtaroth, Karium, and the Zuzium in Cam, and the Aemim 
Amium, I'm sure I'm slaughtering these, and Shavium Curethium, and the Corium in their Mount Seir unto El Peron, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to En Mishpat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amlican, and also the em Emerine, and that dwelt in Katsorin Tamar. And there went out the king of Saddam, and the king of Amora, and the king of Adama, and the king of Zevian, and the king of Bela, the, the same as Zoar, and they joined battle with them in the valley of Siddam, with the Kedor Aloma, Omer, the king of Aim, and the T with Tidal, king of nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Elekar, four kings with five. And the valley of Sidium was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sedom and Amora fled and fell there. And they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Saddam and Amora and all their victuals and, and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sedom, with his goods and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Ivory, for he dwelt. And so this is, this is interesting. So <laughs> this is where we get into this, this Ivrium, right? Where I tell people that, that you really want to be a Hebrew. You don't want to be a Baptist or a Pentecostal or whatever. You know, you don't want to be anything other than what the Bible has allotted for us. And we have our forefather, the one who came way, way, way before us. He wasn't a Jew, if you would notice, because um, it, 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 they weren't even around. It was not till much, much, much later. And so we have Abraham here, and um, he is he is called the Hebrew, the Ivory. So, verse 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Ivory, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Emory, Emory, the brother of Eshkel, the brother of Enar, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Now, that's a rich dude. So you have 300 that's people a, born in your house, That's a lot man. of people. That's just the dudes who are battle-worthy, right? These are the, where's the rest of them? Those are, where's the, the wives and the people, the mothers and everybody taking care of all these, these battle-worthy people? It's a big house, brother. He, they, Abram was the man. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Korva, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the woman also, and the people. First ever sneak attack. Yeah, no, and he totally smote these guys. These guys were, were kings with mass amounts of armies, and he went in the middle of the night like a bunch of ninjas and completely smote them all. And the king of Saddam went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Kedor La Omer, and the kings that were with him at the valley of Shaba, which is the king's valley. And Malchizedek, king of Shalom, brought forth wine, bread and wine, and he was the priest of El Elyon. This is the first time that we actually hear about this. We, we hear right here. This is a, when we're talking about Melchizedek priest, this is how you actually, the, that right translation, we're talking about Melchizedek king. It is a king that is a priest and a king at the same time. And that is why our Messiah follows in this. This is why David talks about the Melchizedek priesthood. And it's interesting because our Messiah was not from the Le Le Levites. He was not a Levite. He was not a, a priest from that line, but he became a priest from the Melchizedek priest line, which is where we first see this. And so verse 19, and he blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham of El Elyon, possessor of heaven and earth. And he and blessed be El Elyon, which has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Saddam said unto El Avram, Give me the persons and take the goods to yourself. And Avram said to the king of Saddam, I have lift up my hand unto El Yahuwah, El Elyon, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you say, I have made Avram rich save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Anar, Eshkol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. All right, somebody want to break this down real quick, what we're at. We're 30 minutes, we're, we're blown doors. When is our first commandment? It's 17. Two more verses, three more verses. Okay, Chapters. what happened right here? What is what is the bottom line? Uh, he went and saved... Uh, Lot, Lot got taken hostage. Lot he basically saved the, the entire land of Sodom from these five kings... And the, he met the Melchizedek priest. He met the king of Sodom. And uh, he was like, here, take all the stuff. Just let me have my people back, and you can take all the stuff that, that you found. Yeah. And he said, no, no, I don't want you to say that. 
everything. I'm I'm so powerful. I have all this riches now because I gave it to you. It was just uh, let my men have what they ate. Let my ha- men have what they took or whatever. But uh, you get all the rest. Yeah, that's it. Bottom line. Thank you very much, kid. Okay, fifteen, Eli, and no commandments so far. After these things, the word of Yahuwah came unto El Avram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Avram, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And Avram said, I don't know, Yahuwah, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Avram said, Behold, to me you have given no seed, and lo, and the one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of Yahuwah came unto him, saying, This shall not be your heir, but he that shall come forth of your own generation shall be your heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward the heavens, and count the stars. If you be able to number them, and he said unto him, So shall your seed be. And he believed in Yahuwah, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am Yahuwah that brought you out of Ur of the Castellum, to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, I don't know Yahuwah, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in their mit- in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the curses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And you shall go to your fathers in peace, and you shall be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorim is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day Yahuwah cut a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto your seed have I given this land, from the river of Mitzrayim unto the great river, the river Perath. The Kenaim and the Kenizim and the Kadomaim and Chittim and Perizim and the Raphaim and the Amorim and the Kenaim and the Girgashim and the Yevushim. Okay, a lot of big words in there, a lot of stuff. And if you're reading, ever reading from the King, none of these will ever make sense, but these are closer to the correct translations, um, like the, the Kidium. The Kittim are the Hittites. Perizim are the Perizites. And Emriam are the Emirites. Um, Amorites. Canaanites. Canaanites. And who are the Canaanites? Uh, the children of Canaan. Yeah, who, who are they though? Who do they have in their, their uh, genealogy? Well, they have Nimrod. Who do they have in their genealogy? Giants. Okay. Ruined, ruined, ruined the DNA. All right, so let's do it. Let's do 16. We're almost done, folks. Thank you guys very much for hanging in there with us. If you're still there with us, um, you guys are warriors. Okay, Eli, read that, and then I will read 17, which is our final one. So go ahead, hit it. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, woman, born him no children. And she had a handmaid, a mitzri, whose name was Hagar. Hagar. And Sarai said unto El Abram, Behold now, Yahweh has restrained me from bearing. I pray you, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's woman, took Hagar, her maid, the mystery, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave, and gave her to her man, Abram, to be his woman. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto El Abram, My wrong be upon you, I have given my maid into your bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes, yet who had judged between me and you. But Abram said unto El Sarai, Behold, your maid is in your hand, do to her as it pleases you. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of Yahuwah found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of Shur. And he said, Hagir, 
said I's maid, whence came you, and whither will you go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, said I. And the angel of Yahuwah said unto her, Return to your mistress, and submit yourself under her hands. And the angel of Yahuwah said unto her, I will multiply your seed exceedingly, that it shall not be that it shall not be numbered for your multitude. And the angel of Yahuwah said unto her, Behold, you are with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Yishmael, because Yahuwah has heard your affliction. And he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of Yahuwah that spoke unto her El Roy, for she said, Have I also look, have I also here looked after him that sees me? Wherefore the well was called Ber La Chai Roy, because behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagir bore Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagir bore Yishmael. And Abram was four score and six years old when Hagir bore Yishmael to Abram. Okay. Awesome. So we made it this far. We're going into the final chapter of this. <clears throat> All right. And so I actually haven't read this, so I don't know where the commandments are. We'll go. We'll hit it when we do it. Genesis 17. And Avram was 90 years old and nine. Yahuwah appeared to El Avram and said unto him, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and Elohim talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name any more be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made you, and I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come out of you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you in their generations." For an everlasting covenant to be Elohim unto you and to your seed after you. Guys, and I want to stop it right there because, I mean, this is a huge, this is a huge thing. This is for you guys, right? Everybody that's sitting around my virtual table, everybody that's sitting around my physical table, gentlemen um, and gentle women out there, this is for all of us. It says, this is the words of our creator. And he says, I am establishing a covenant between me and you and your seed. Guys, you are the seed of Abraham. And to you in their generations, for how long? For for a short, until the Messiah comes covenant or in a what? Forever. Everlasting, Everlasting covenant. And what is he going to do? What is this promise to us? Will, I will be what? He will bless us and it multiplies exceedingly. I, I will be your God. I will be your Elohim. Look, there's only one. I will be that. And then he says he'll also be your Elohim to the seed after you guys this is not just to me this is to you this is to your kids this is to the, everybody who's in on this and what is this what is the covenant what is it what is any part of any covenant it, that's the one part right what is he asking abraham for uh him to follow obedience him. obedience yeah ab absolutely and for those who don't think that the there, there was a torah prior to moshe these guys all had Torah. Everybody was walking in covenant. They didn't walk contrary to our creator. Verse 8. Before you start reading again. Yes. On this list, this person has walked before Yahuwah and be perfect. Genesis 17, 1. Genesis 17, 1. Okay. 17, 1. Okay, so this is a, this. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, Yahuwah appeared to El Abraham and said unto him, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect. Um, he's talking to Abraham. Though. He is talking to Abraham. He is talking to Abraham. But I mean, this is what every single one of us should be doing. I mean, it absolutely should be a command to all of us. Walk before me and be perfect. I am El Shaddai. So, I mean, if it was to Abraham, wouldn't it be to us? Yeah, probably. Yep. I mean, because it's, and it's our seed and our lineage. So walk before me and be perfect. I think that, that that would be a command. And I will make my covenant between me and you. I mean, it's the beginning of a covenant. His, to, that is the beginning of what we need to do. You know, when we're talking about what it was and it's obedience. So, Eli, how do you, how would we walk, bef how would we walk before Yah and be perfect? What would that entail? It would be not sinning, and but sin is the transgression of the Torah. So we would walk and be perfect by not transgressing his Torah. Yeah, not transgressing the Torah. And so this commandment would be what? 
Walk but, before me and be perfect. Walk before me and be perfect. I think that's it. I think we might have had one. I've, you know what? And I don't see these on. Ah, uh, dang! This thing just Why blew. Why keep doing that? Oh man, it's a horrible thing. It's terrible. Um, Dogs it left. does do it to us every night. I don't understand. Um, you would think the uh, B system would be a better quality coating team, but you know. Oh, it is better. It doesn't like the laws of God. That, that's yeah, why it it's blowing up on you because it doesn't. Like it hates the doing. laws of God. <laughs> Probably, I have no doubt. Everybody seems to. Okay, walk before me and be perfect. So let's not do that. Walk before me. And be perfect. Okay. Uh, yes. Apple. Um, yes. Thank you, Nicole. Really appreciate it. And I'm so glad you enjoyed us. And there's other people out there who did. Shayla. Shayla's did. She was very happy about it. Oh, I did it to us again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm gonna try this one last time, um, and then we will add this later if we're just getting completely smoted. So it saved a little bit of it. Um, this is just a. a Horrible thing. There's something about the paste. Please work. Please. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So walk before third me and be perfect. Charm. Yeah. Don't say that. Third time's a charm. That's satanic. Save. Yeah. It. <laughs> save. It should automatically save. Third let's... time's the perfect time. There you go. Thanks, sure. Thanks, Eli. Okay. Let's let's get back to this. So very first one. Okay, so there it is. Walk before me, be perfect. It's to all of us. And so, um, and I will make a covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Okay, um, where were we at prior to this? Eight. Eight. Okay. Um, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your seed on seven, uh, to be our Elohim unto you and to your seed after you. Yep. So that is a huge thing, guys, to, to have our Elohim say, I will be an Elohim unto you. And I will give unto you and to your seed after you the land wherein you are a stranger all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their Elohim. And Elohim said unto El Abraham, You shall guard my covenant, therefore, you and your seed after you in their generations. Okay, that sounds like a commandment to me. Anyone? Yeah. Yep. Nicole? Guard, guard Nicole? The, yes. Guard the covenant? Guard his covenant. So what would that entail, Cade? Basically, guarding his government, be doing as he has told us in the Torah sure. to do what to do. Guard Yahuwah's covenant. Covenant. Okay. All oh, right, we need to get this thing blown up. Okay, groovy. So here we go. Um, and then, so he's going to define the covenant. So he's like, you guys need to guard my covenant. What is this covenant? This is my covenant, which ye shall guard between me and you and your seed after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. Okay, so that sounds like a command. Mm -hmm. uh, you shall circumcise the flesh of your It should be a sign of the covenant betwixt me and you. Okay, so I'm going for this, and I'm hoping that commandment 10 doesn't um, blow up like the rest of them. Oh. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to hit pace, but it's just being a bugger. Okay, pace. Okay, um, so every male among you, every male shall be circumcised. Every male shall be... I don't know why I capitalized it, sir. And it's actually from 9 all the way to 27, the same thing all the way. Okay, so it goes from 9 to what? Circumcised. 27. Okay, so... so I don't know if you want to. Yeah, because it's... Well, if it's all the same command, then these are just... Um, adjectives then. Okay, so this is my covenant between verse 10, which ye shall guard between me and you and your seed after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a sign of the covenant betwixt me and you. I think it's the same command, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every child, male child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money or of uh, of any stranger which is not of your seed. I would say that's it right there. It gives us another piece of this command. Circumcising eight days old. Anyone yeah. with me? Is anyone e with me? Every, yeah. Everyone under your house. Needs everyone, to every male at eight years old. Eight days. Or eight days, excuse me. All right, so let's... Um, number 11. Okay, so what's the commandment, gentlemen? Every male eight days old must be circumcised. Every male, why does it capitalize this? Male 
eight days old must be circumcised. Okay, so what if, uh, if circumcision falls on a Shabbat? I would say you have to follow it. I just don't think you want anything other than eighth day. Okay, now there's some funky circumcision in the Jewish religion. Uh, do we go down are, we, are we really going over this? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I uh, suppose we shouldn't, but I mean, there's a, there's, they will do some stuff in that, the Talmud that is not acceptable. It's it is, it's terrible. It's, it's not even acceptable, like, in more, humans. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's like, not, like, not, not in the Torah. Because they drink, they will drink the blood. They will put blood on them. I don't even, I'm not even going to go down this road. So, um, maybe another video, another time, but, um, it's not this one, not, not this one. Video for some other channel, a rated R channel. <laughs> Um, yes, and so the Talmud is no good. Uh, verse 13. He that is born in your house and he that is bought with your money must be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So is that another command? I think so, it's all the same thing. Or is this all the same thing? He is born in your house and he that is bought with your money must be, I think everybody, right? Yeah. yeah. All males, yeah. So it's the same. Every male, and so this covers it. And the uncircumcised male child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So is that a command? Uh, no, he has to tell you what happens if you don't circumcise them. Kind of like a thing afterwards. Well, you would, you would, uh, you would break them off. You wouldn't let them in the village. You would kick them out. Is is the is the thing? So, Nicole, anything? You don't have anything here, boys? Anything else? So I would say I know you're breaking them down, but I think it would just be all one. Commandment through this whole thing. So. Because it's talking all about circumcision and about doing it on the eight days. Well, no, because that, that you don't have that at the very first thing. So if we have like commandment ten, doesn't give us an age. It does not give us a time. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, I guess we will talk about this. And you know, again, we're we are looking for feedback from you guys that are out there um, on this. How do we put this correctly? And I guess I we could put what seventeen and then add everything together on this. Maybe we'll we'll talk about that and discuss it. I don't know. Um, so where are we at on this? And the answer is that whose flesh are we? Okay, so yeah, so one through fifteen. So maybe we'll just add this all together on the thing and add it. I don't know. We, again, I'm just mumbling with us all. Verse sixteen, and I will bless her and give you a son. No, you're on. 15, and Elohim said unto El Abraham, and for Sarah, your woman, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, be her name be, shall be her name be. Shall her name be. I know, I'm slaughtering this. Okay, and I will bless her and give you a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? And Abraham said unto, Elo, unto Elohim, Oh, that Yishmael might live through you. And Elohim said, Sarah, your woman, shall bear you a son indeed, and you shall call his name Yitchek. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Yishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Yitchak, which Sarah shall bear unto you at the set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him, and Elohim went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Yishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every, and every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of the foreskin in the self same day, as Elohim had said unto him. And Abraham was ninety years old, and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Yishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the selfsame day was Abram uncircumcised and Yishmael his son. And all the men of his house, born in the house and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. Okay, gentlemen, um, that concludes this next thing. It does not conclude what we're going to do with this. So however you guys see the video posted is how we end up with this. I think we will... Um, take commandment 10 and make it just expanded. So I think we're only going to make uh, three commandments tonight. So we ended up with seven, eight. So we'll have eight, nine, and 10. And 10 will cover everything under this. So 
we will clean this up, wrap this up, and get ready for the next session. And we thank you guys very, very, very much for spending time with us. Um, gentlemen, do you guys have anything to say here? Anything left? Uh, thanks for sticking around. These are some long videos, but we thank you guys for sticking around with these. Uh, please follow along if you guys are enjoying it. If you have any questions, please put down in the comments. And uh, have a great night. Shalom. Yep, shalom, everyone. All right, shalom. guys. See ya.